This is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas. Today I want to teach an easy latched cable. It's not really a cable. It's an effect though that looks a lot like a cable. Let me show you a couple of examples. Here's one. And there are several things I really like about this cable. Let me get in close. First of all, this cable really stands up above the rest of the knitting. That's one example and here is another example and it's it's very three-dimensional so I like that a lot. Secondly, because of the way it's latched up, if you use a color yarn that changes color slowly, you'll see how the color comes up on the cables. Like here in this this area where it transitions from the white to the blue. See how the white comes up higher than the blue, which makes a really interesting pattern. Now both of these scarves, this was the adult scarf and this was the child scarf, these were in my Goldilocks book. A few years ago I got this really ambitious idea that I would write a book for beginners who had a bulky or a bond type machine and they wanted to really make projects and have them look really good. So I wrote the book and I had easy things to make like here's a hat with that same cable on it and it's in Lion Brand Tweed. Anyway these things were easy to make but the easiest things were at the front of the book and then the most complicated things were at the back of the book. For instance you finish the book, if you work it as a course, you could finish it with a real raglan sweater with buttonholes and nicely finished seams and the whole bit. Now this came with four hours of video, still comes with four hours of video, so it's a two DVD set that goes with it and the cable I'm going to teach comes from this book. For my sample I'm just going to do a two strand e-wrap. That'll work well for this. So I've got some extra yarn here and I'm going to fold the yarn and do my two strands. And I just very loosely wrap each needle in a longhand E. This will be a bottom edge that doesn't even need the crochet if I'm lucky. And then if it needs a crochet, I could always put it on. Now alternatively, you could start with waist yarn and then pull out enough yarn for the crochet just to save you from having extra ends to hide. Pulling out the yarn ahead of time gives you something to work with. This will twist when you e-wrap it, but just ignore that. It won't matter at all. So I've e-wrapped and I'm going to unwind my loose end. It's a little bit twisted in there hang it below the knitting on a clothespin or a clip. I've got a garter bar clip. Then I'm going to put a weight on it. And I'm going to knit several rows of plain knitting. After I've knitted quite a few rows, I need to pull some yarn out for crochet before I cut the yarn. So I'm doing that. Now to give myself a stitch holder for the top of the work, I'm going to hand feed some yellow yarn. But first I'm going to pick out my cables. I will go five stitches for the, from the edge for the first cable. And then I'll skip five. Eh, one, two, three, four, five. I'll do five stitches from each edge. Put the cables wherever you want to put them. But here's the tricky bit. You're going to drop those stitches. So just drop them. Let them, the needles go all the way back against the back of the bed and they're not going to be knitted with the waist yarn. Now I'm going to grab my waist yarn and hand feed it and knit eight rows. Let's have a look at what we've got. This is the piece of knitting that I just made. Here's the waist yarn and then here's the green blend yarn. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to unravel. I'm going to rip this right down. A fast way to unravel 
is with a transfer tool. Just poke it in there and pull up. Now you want to make sure that both of the stitches unravel right on down. You can also pull sideways and pull downward. Yeah, mine wants a little help. So I'm unraveling this right down to the bottom of the work. After I unravel those two stitches all the way down, I have a tremendous amount of yarn loops. And the very bottom yarn loops, that is these two I'm holding closest to myself, this is the unraveled e-wrap cast on. And I'm going to take my latch tool, put it in those, and twist them not once, but twice. Now the only time you twist is at the very bottom. After that, you just grab two loops and draw them through the loops on the hook. Then you go back, grab two more loops and draw them through. And grab two more loops and draw them through. And two more. And two more. Now this is a great way to practice using your latch tool if you're a beginner. And if you're teaching a beginner, this is a good little exercise to get them practicing using the latch tool. I'm almost to the top. And when I say the top, I mean this spot right here where the color changes. That yellow at the top is strictly a stitch holder. So when I get to here, I'm either going to pull a piece of yarn through or put a safety pin or something on it. And really, what I have that is the handiest is a little clothespin. So that's going to just hold that loop so it doesn't unravel. So there's that one. Now I've got another one over here. I'm going to do the same thing. Unravel it right on down. And it is helpful to spread it as you do this so that you can make sure you're getting both stitches unraveled. This particular cable is best finished with crochet. And we pulled down all that extra yarn to crochet with. So I'm sticking a clip on this last loop up here. And I'm going to get a regular crochet hook. An easy way to get the work off the machine is to hold the work up against the bed and then bring the needles out and push them back again and it'll fall right off. Now I have this piece ready to be crocheted. I'm going to turn it and I'm a lefty. So in my case I'm going to turn it so I can work from the left with my left hand like that. In your case you don't have to turn it. You could work from the right with the pearl side facing you like that. So you put your needle in the first stitch and draw a loop through and then put it in the second stitch, draw a loop through. I'm doing a single crochet, but you do any stitch you like. It could be double, half double, triple, or it could even be backwards crochet. Just whatever you think is pretty. Single crochet tends to just vanish into this scarf. Now I've done the stitches from the edge to the first cable. And here's my cable hanging on a clothespin. So I'm sticking my hook in it and taking the clothespin off. And I'll do a single crochet in it. And 
Then I'll single crochet in each of these stitches on across. The way that the waist yarn is holding them makes it easy for me to see which stitch to get. And then this is the last one before the next cable. There's that next cable. Taking the clothespin out and just putting my hook through it. Doing my single crochet as usual. And then finding the next loop after it for the next single. Oops, a little bit twisted here. There we go. And the next. And the next. There's one last one on the end, and I'm going to get it. Then I'm cutting my yarn. I have much more than I needed. More than I need is better than less than I need. And I'm pulling that end on through, tightening that up. And I'm removing this waist yarn just by unraveling it. Let's have a look at what we've got. This is how those cables look. They are thick and deep. And you can give your knitting a little tug vertically. That kind of evens the cables up, but it also closes the stitches so that they aren't so sideways stretched. The machine tends to stretch the work sideways because of the needle spacing. So there it is, all finished. And on the other side, here's how it looks. They look like pearl stitches because they are from the knit side. But they're two rows and two stitches. That's what gives you the big dramatic cable.